sheep is all the hard work, eh? Yeah, it's all worth it. All worth it. That was about five days of waiting. In April this year, my friend Owen and I decided to stay in Umgedi Underground Hide at Ontaris Bush Camp in the Greater Kruger for six whole days. And our main goal was to see and photograph elephants. This was by no means a guarantee because the Lowfeld had received a huge amount of rain during the summer, filling the rivers and making the waterholes like this one slightly less productive. One thing that was for certain though was that we had come fully prepared. How's it going? What have you got there? Hey Phil, I'm attempting to take photographs of a bumblebee on the lid. <laughs> nice man, what uh, equipment did you bring with? I have got the 1D and I've got a 200 to 400 here with the built-in 1.4 converter. Awesome man, and your, okay. your other lenses that you got? I've got the 5D Mark IV here with the 70 to 200 2.8 and then just underneath the desk is the 600 Prime with an F4. Do you think you're going to use it? I think I am going to use what it. Are you gonna Not use as it? much as this. But I think with the birds and trying to get a, a dragonfly and fly to a bumblebee or something nice and tight. Awesome, man. And then what are you hoping for most in this week? Elephants. Elephants. Yeah, I think a nice breeding herd of eddies would be good. So the waterhole looks so different from when we were here last time. There were no water lilies in it, but I think it actually adds a really nice element. It's nice and colorful and those big purple flowers actually attract dragonflies and bumblebees. So we're definitely going to try and get some shots of those. And luckily on the far side, they have been cleared. So you should still be able to see animal reflections if there's no wind. And hopefully some star reflections as well. You might remember that last time I was able to get that beautiful photograph of the young male lion drinking under the Milky Way. Now this time I'm really hoping that I can recreate that shot, but with elephants. Taking these unique photos of animals drinking under the stars is possible at Antares not only because Umgedi Hyde faces south, which is ideal if you want to include the Milky Way, but also because the hide is super comfortable, allowing you to stay awake deep into the night. So we've literally only been in the hide for a few hours and it's teeming with birds. We've seen 16 species already, including a striped kingfisher coming down um, grabbing something in the water and just now lots of um, red billed buffalo weavers, the tail spur fowl, Swainson's um, spur fowl, just loads of things coming down and these buffalo weavers seem very unhappy so maybe there's a mongoose or a snake close by. Uh, my favorite though were the um, magpie shrikes, the old long tail shrikes just sitting right here next to the water hole um, calling that they've got that beautiful bubbly call so yeah great start to the afternoon we also saw a, a very nervous impala and a leopard tortoise come down to drink shortly after the tortoise disappeared a large herd of relaxed impalas made their way down to the water giving us a chance to dial in our settings properly And as darkness approached, I set up my tripod and my wide angle lens for in case the elephants showed up during the night. It's about half past seven and I've just had my second cup of coffee. It's our first morning here at Umgedi Hyde and Owen and I had a really exciting night last night. There were lions roaring all around us and one of them even lay down very close to the hide here behind us. But unfortunately, never came down to drink and neither did the elephants. But we did see a very relaxed civet and Owen was even able to get this incredible photograph of it. And that's what I love about these underground hides. 
when you come and sit at them at night, you get a chance of seeing creatures that you would never ever see on drive. Today we're really hoping that the Ellie's are going to come down and drink during the day. And then tonight we'll try again with the star shots and hopefully another predator comes to drink. The elephants never did come down that day, but there was plenty of things keeping us entertained around the waterhole. The leopard tortoise came back for a drink. I tried my best to get a photo of one of the bumblebees hovering next to a water lily. Got him. Successfully, I might add. And I used the opportunity to catch up on some editing work while things were quiet. So it's about half past four now on our second afternoon and the reason I look like this is because I just had a two hour nap. At the moment Owen and I are kind of taking two hour shifts throughout the day and then spending late afternoon and early morning together looking for animals. Um, and I'll tell you it's tough, it's tough staying awake and we're doing everything we can to keep our bodies um, sort of responding to the challenges. We are stretching, we're trying to eat well, drink as much water as we can. But sitting in one place, oh wait, there's a beautiful kudu ball coming. Owen, Owen, do you copy? Yeah, he came down quite close and he's just turned around again. Um, I just thought I'd let you know that he is in the area, uh, so if you walk down, just keep an eye out. But um, yeah, you're welcome to come down if you need to. Now the elephants haven't come down yet, um, but it's been kind of cold and windy, really not the ideal um, weather to see animals. But today we did actually see a big water come down, a beautiful uh, waterbuck bull, there was another herd of impalas, and a few uh, small things as well, like some dwarf mongooses and a little slender mongoose. Earlier today, I took some of the star photographs that I took on the first night, uh, stacked them together, and the star trail looks absolutely amazing. So tonight, it looks like, at least according to the weather forecast, that we will have clear skies again. So I'm gonna try to take, um, or at least I'm gonna put my tripod out again with the wide angle lens and try and take another star trail shot. And hopefully this time, the elephants are gonna play along. To determine exactly what time of the night the Milky Way would be most visible from within the hide, I pointed my phone south and opened an amazing app called Photopills. Once in, I simply clicked on the planner, chose my current location, and then set it to the current time. I then activated the star planner and fast forwarded until I could see the Milky Way appearing. The app then shows you exactly what time it'll be visible in the top left hand corner. I thought I'd show you just how I set up my tripod and camera to get that shot of the elephants drinking under the star trails that I so desperately want. Now, the first thing is just to get the tripod in position and I love this Manfrotto 190 Go because what it allows me to do is to get the head nice and low close to the ground and that just gives you a great angle up to the stars. Let's quickly do that. Obviously making sure that it's pointing in the right direction and then let's fit the camera and just see whether it's lining up nicely so I've obviously got my widest lens on in this case it is a 16 to 35 f4 and I'm zoomed out all the way to 16 millimeters so I'm gonna line it up and let's just see how much we're getting in the frame I help if I take the lens cap off Now at this stage it seems to need to just lift a little bit, so I'm just going to lift this front leg a little bit. There we go. And now that I'm happy with the way that it's lined up, before I focus, I first need to fit the cable release because putting it in sometimes can bump the lens 
And the last thing you want to do is to get focus first and then bump it and lose your focus. So there we go, that's in. Make sure that I'm on auto focus. And what I do now is I actually focus on the edge of the water. And I always do the focus when it's still light because if you do it after dark, there's just a risk that you don't actually focus on the right spot. And the last thing you wanna do is to take 100 photos throughout the night and they're all out of focus. So what I'm doing now is I'm just lining up my focus point to the far side, focusing on the edge, and then I switch over to manual focus. And it's really important at this stage that you don't touch your focus ring in the front. I'm gonna lift the camera again and get my composition right. And there we go, I'm ready. All I basically have to do now is to choose the right settings for the Milky Way and take my photographs at the right time using that photo pills app when I know the Milky Way is gonna move into the shot. So tonight, that's pretty much gonna be around about half past 10. Always start your Star Trail shots with a fully charged battery and make sure you recharge your spare so that you can replace it first thing in the morning. I just love the sounds and the anticipation around sunset. When darkness slowly sets in, Adam Getty Hyde's floodlights finally switch on to light up the edge of the waterhole. At quarter to three on the second night, the civet showed up again, but this time it drank a lot longer. Two hours later, an African wildcat also snuck in, but it was too shy to drink. And just like that, another night had passed without elephants showing up. The crack of dawn is my favorite time of the day, when Mother Nature's alarm clocks, the Crested Franklins, remind you that it's time for another cup of coffee. Just like late in the afternoon, the air is filled with anticipation and it feels like a lion could appear out of nowhere at any moment. And that was our routine over the following three days. We had coffee together first thing in the mornings, followed by rotating shifts of sleeping and waterhole watching, making sure that at least one of us had eyes on the water's edge 24-7. For long periods of time, nothing would happen during which we just sat in silence or talked some nonsense. But discipline was very important in order to stay fresh. So we cleaned the hide at least once a day and made enough time to stretch out stiff legs and achy backs. The only time we would ever leave the hide was to get food or to visit the bathroom, always checking carefully for puff adders that lay near invisible on the pathway to the lodge and thick-tailed scorpions that foraged near the hide entrance at night. Hours would pass without something significant showing up, but then out of the blue, an animal would appear from the thickets. On the fourth afternoon, it was a massive old giraffe bull. Our presence didn't seem to concern him at all, but he was in no rush to drink. After properly surveying the surroundings, he finally bent down to quench his thirst. Seeing this giant drink from up close like this and hearing it as well was truly a memorable experience and we were delighted to get some fantastic photos of it as well. Another highlight of the week in Umgedi was all the birds that came down to the waterhole. In the six days we saw a whopping 46 different species from within the hive, ensuring that we always had something to aim our cameras at.
And then, on our fifth morning, while we were having coffee and expecting it the least, they finally showed up. This is what we've been waiting for. The elephants have finally arrived. A whole herd with lots of youngsters drinking right here in front of us. What an amazing experience. Wow. For 13 unforgettable minutes, this small breeding herd of elephants kept our hearts racing and gave us some incredible photographic opportunities. This is one of the best sightings of my life. And then, just as quickly as they had arrived, they disappeared into the thickets again. Say, buddy, doesn't get better than that, eh? Oh, that was epic. Cheap as all the hard work, eh? Yeah, it's all worth it. All what happens in there. That was about five days of waiting for this herd of elephants to come in. Proper sighting, big herd with little ones, and geez, they must have been here for a good 10 15 minutes. Geez, what an adrenaline rush. <laughs> We knew that it was going to be a long shot coming at the end of the wet season, but this is exactly what we had hoped for. A nice big herd of elephants and they were youngsters and big ones and yeah, just everything that I'd hoped and dreamed it would be. Uh, hopefully we got some nice footage out of that, some nice photographs and some nice video clips. And yeah, this is what makes Antari so special and Umgeri High to be able to sit there in comfort with elephants that close. It's unbeatable. It was extremely hard to leave Antares bush camp after an incredible week in Umgeri Hyde. And even though I never got my shot of the elephants drinking under the stars, it gives me a challenge to complete later this year. Go check out the interview in which Owen and I answer questions about our time in the Hyde sent through by fans on Instagram. It's a long one, so make yourself a cup of coffee before you press play. And speaking of coffee, if you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, please consider popping into my supporters page by following the link in the description below and buying me a coffee, which is a small once-off donation of $3 per cup. Or show long-term support by becoming a pack member for only $5 a month. All these donations are used to travel to new awesome destinations and to create more and better safari videos. Remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below what other adventures you think I should take on.